everyone and welcome back to the craft room. Uh, this week has been mostly a kind of behind the scenes uh, work week. I've been working on a lot of uh, additions to the shop as well as kind of trying to make some updates to my social media. So I do have a newsletter that I have been putting out every month and I took a break over the summer uh, with the newsletter and then I just I came back and I just created a new one for September and I wanted to let you know about it um it's basically I'm, I'm using a different newsletter uh platform I liked it I liked the uh the layout a little bit better than what I had been using before so let me go ahead and show you what it looks like so my last newsletter was it was difficult for me to kind of I'm not a graphic designer so it was hard for me to sort of uh, make it look nice and I feel like I'm using constant contact this is the the newsletter platform I'm using and it's just it's kind of just a lot easier to create a nice looking newsletter I feel like so um, I did this one for September so for those of you that had signed up for my previous newsletter you will need to re-sign up for this one and I'll put a link I have a link on my blog I'll have a link in my uh, channel notes here and then I believe I also have a link on my Instagram accounts too so this is kind of what you'll see it's sort of a just a nicer layout I think and it's a quick read it's something I just send out once a month I might send out maybe one time extra maybe something that's going on in the shop some new uh, releases or something like that but other than that this is just kind of a um, kind of pulling together everything that I have on my YouTube channel, the blog, anything that you might be interested in reading all in one spot. So it's kind of nice to subscribe to the newsletter because then you kind of have everything you need right there. Another kind of uh, new thing I decided to do was to create an extra or an another Instagram account for my journal making. I have currently, the one that I have now, I I was kind of having everything all in one. So I had my journals, um, journal ephemera organization or junk journal ephemera organization my card making um craft room things all, everything all in one spot and i feel like it works a little bit better if i kind of have a um, separate instagram account just for journal making so this is the one this is my main account so this is for card making uh craft room organization that kind of thing so um, i created this one and then let me show you my other one so then this is my Instagram account for uh, just journal making and updates to the shop. It's called a Blue, Blue Scallop Creations Shop. And there is a link over on my original Instagram that you can um, go over to this one. But I'll put the links to both of them below, too, so you can kind of see. But I'm trying to kind of keep this more journal related because I know I have some subscribers that like to do junk journals and that kind of thing. And others that just like to do card making and like to see new stamp sets and things like that. So I figured I'd divide it up so that you can kind of see what you want or you can kind of uh, subscribe to what you want, to, to how it applies to you. So um, this will be kind of my... Uh, collage, uh, art journaling, um, tips for junk journaling, that kind of thing. So you can um, head over to this this uh, account if this is the type of thing that you're interested in. So in addition to working on uh, kind of the different behind the scenes things, I've been trying to get back into card making and I'm currently a, an affiliate for Catherine Pooler stamps and I really love, or Catherine Pooler designs, I really love all of her products. I've been really getting into the inks lately. I just really have, have enjoyed using them. And uh, she has two new ink pads coming out. These are these are going to be on the 13th. And um, these are the two colors. Let me show you um, the swatches up close. I just swatched them. Um, this is with an olive. It's kind of like a, this, these are from her spa uh, the spa inks, so they're kind of like a more muted tones, lighter colored inks, and um, this is sort of a uh, greenish yellow, and then um, on the lake is more of a blue, and again, it's like a kind of a muted blue color, and I've seen a lot, she has a lot of uh, samples on the blog right now, and I really like how she uses um, the new Christmas stamps that are coming out. She'll use this on the late color with the Christmas stamps. And I love a blue Christmas um, for that kind of retro look. I just think blue is so pretty um, to kind of incorporate in your Christmas colors, not you know, in addition to the red and green, but I think the blues and the pinks and, and those kind of colors can be really pretty too. So I've been kind of experimenting with the inks and I was, I was, I haven't made cards in a while and I was 
really having fun kind of getting back into it. So I have a bunch of her stamp sets all out. I was kind of mishmashing them all together. Uh, but I, because I wanted to try to use the ink colors. And so I came up with these two card designs that I thought would be kind of nice for fall too. Uh, I'm using a sentiment from an older stamp set. This stamp set is called Warm and Cozy. And it's really cute. It's got um, some cute little thermoses and things like that. But I was using the sentiment from that to combine with her Strings and Things stamp set. That was a more recent one that came out. And this is really cute. It has yarn and just some cute sewing items on it. And I, so I thought this would be really pretty to kind of incorporate these softer ink colors with it. So I did one using, um, this is also another release, the basket uh, die. But I incorporated the yarn in here using the uh, on the lake and with an olive colors. So I did this card here, just kind of a, a cute little knitting card. And then this one I did um, incorporating these books because I love this little stack of books here. So I thought that was kind of fun with the, with the yarn. And I tried something a little different here. I like to, sometimes if I'm doing just a clean and simple white card, I, I like to put a little border of uh, cardstock around the back, um, usually like a light gray or just maybe like a, a color or something. Um, but I've been liking light gray lately. And for this one, it was kind of funny. I was making the card and I had this white card panel sitting on top and there was a shadow behind it as I was making the card. And I was thinking, oh, that looks kind of good, <laughs> the shadow, and, which I think what is that's what the little border is supposed to be like anyway. But instead of having the border go all the way around the uh, card panel, I just made it go around the two sides, um, the top and the right side, to kind of make it look like a shadow. So I don't know, I thought this was just something different. Um, it kind of gives it a little angular look. And then I've got you know the, the images right on top and I pop them up with, with foam tape. And I thought these turned out really cute, just a kind of a nice uh, card you could give to a friend. Um, sympathy card, think you know, thinking of you, get well. It kind of applies to everything. And when I'm working with stamp sets, I love that I can kind of mix and match um, with these stamps. I was using all Catherine Pooler stamps, but I actually pulled from a lot of her different stamp sets. So I did the the sentiment from one stamp set. I did uh, you know the basket die, and then I did the yarn and the books from the other stamp set. I also, on this one, I wanted to, I just felt like it needed a little something, these little hearts here. And so a lot of the sets have little hearts on them and things. So I just pulled from, I forget which one I pulled the, the hearts from. I think it's a totally different stamp set. Um, oh no, it's actually this one. Um, this one's really cute too. Uh, this was, let me see what this one was called. Oh, Turn Up the Beat stamp set. So it's got all kinds of um, kind of an 80s theme to it. So, but the little hearts on there were perfect. I just needed something small. And also what has helped me kind of work with these more, I, I'm more used to working with the brighter Catherine Pooler colors. I guess the, it's called the, they're called the party inks. Uh, but for the spa inks, it's really helpful to download. If you're, if you're wanting to, you know, purchase her inks, it's really helpful to download the color wheels. It's a free download and you can put them together and they're great because they work with the inks and you can, um, kind of figure out what colors go well together. This is for the party inks. And then I downloaded one for the spa inks. So I was kind of trying to figure out, I wanted a different color to kind of go with the, the with an olive and on the lake. So I don't have a lot of the spa colors, as I mentioned. So I kind of looked for something that would be similar. I wanted kind of something in the kind of pink area. So I chose, I looked at red violet here, and then I looked at the red violet over in the party inks, and I just kind of found something that I thought would kind of be the same thing, close to the same thing. And I thought Be Mine was a good choice. And it's a little bit of a brighter pink, but not so much when you have it in a small image like these hearts. So I like how that turned out. It just kind of moves your eye up the card so you can see the sentiment. And then it kind of um, just adds a little bit of interest um, to the muted colors here. So I thought that that turned out really well. And then for the books here, again, I kind of used that pink color. But instead, I pulled uh, some Copic markers that sort of went along with the uh, the spa, the red violet spa colors. And I have uh, this one is rose red. 
So that was for part of the book. And then I also used uh, Rose Mist. So this is R83. So I kind of mix those in and I just use my, co I kind of have a Copic swatch chart that I sort of look at everything and I can kind of compare the colors. So, so I thought uh, that would be a good choice for the books. Again, kind of dividing up, make, giving a third color in there to, to give it a little more interest. So um, as I mentioned, these inks will be available uh, on the 13th. So, um, and along with some other releases too. And she's got all, all kinds of updates on her blog and what's coming up. So you can take a look at that. So, so this is fun kind of getting back into card making. I need to make some more cards too. So I'm going to be working on those. Uh, another thing I've been working on too, I had uh, mentioned, I think in my last video, I wanted to kind of get into my uh, paper tabby kit for August and kind of work on some things. I just got my September one, which I will go through really quick and show you what I got. Uh, but I, I was thinking for August, I wanted to try to make some cluster embellishments because when I'm making my junk journals, I've been kind of scrambling at the end to, I want some handmade things to put in there. And so I make clus cluster embellishments at the end and I'd much rather do it, you know, all the time. So I always have some on hand, so I'm not just making them uh, last minute. And I was thinking these kits are great to do that, the, the paper tabby kits, because you can, um, there's a lot of little pieces in here um, that she puts that, uh, Amy puts together so that you can, that everything kind of coordinates and you don't have to pick from your collection <laughs> to kind of figure out what goes together. So it's kind of nice. You can just make some quick, uh, quick embellishments with this. So I wanted to try this out. So I actually, I made one really quick. Um, I mean, I ended up making a, a tag because I wanted to use, she always puts a lot of these little ladies in here, these retro ladies. And I thought that she was so cute. And I, so I thought, she fit perfectly on the, the tag that came with the kit. So I just kind of did a little bit of collage on here with a book page and just uh, a little background card, a couple of uh, background pieces here, and then just a little bit of a lined sheet here so that you could maybe do some writing on the tag. So it could be a, a journal tag. So, uh, and then I added the little flower on top with some foam tape. So I thought that was really cute. That came out really well. So I'm going to go through here and see what else I can make with this. And then also I've got the new, uh, the new kit that just arrived. So I want to, I haven't even opened it yet. So I'll, I'll open it on this video and you guys can kind of see, see what came with the kit too. So I have to figure out if I'm going to, I've got to get some of this stuff cleaned up too. Um, this is just all of my, my card making supplies. Um, Oh, actually, I'll just, I'll show you some of the things, too, that I have on my desk that I always use for card making. Uh, this, I was thinking about this and how this is kind of an oldie but a goodie. So this is a, this was a, this is a chalk eraser. This is from, I've been card making for probably, it's around 17 years, I guess, give or take some. And uh, back when chalk ink was really popular, probably about 17 years ago, they had these erasers. And this brand is Pebbles, which I don't think they have this brand anymore. Um, Pebbles made, I think they had scrapbook paper. But if anyone remembers Pebbles, let me know if you remember what their products were. I think they had embellishments too, maybe like, um, uh, I don't know if they had enamel dots or not. I, some, I, I, I'm trying to think of... Uh, I, I want to say it's some sort of an embellishment. But anyway, they had um, this this uh, chalk eraser that came in this comes in this little uh, holder here. And this, this is the best thing. It's basically just a white eraser. And you can buy these just normal. Um, I actually have one. Let me see. I like this brand. You can get these in a in a box of like eight on Amazon, and they're great. I use I I don't use pink erasers anymore. These are great because you can use them for every day. But then also, um, what I use the eraser for is to erase. I kind of run the eraser along new solid stamps so that they stamp better. So um, I had this new. Actually, I even for this this yarn stamp here, this is more of a kind of a solid stamp on the lines, and it really helped me to kind of run this eraser over the the stamp just to give it a little bit of a tooth so that it would hold on to the ink better when you stamp it. 
But anyway, I just I, I just was thinking how much I love this. And this is the same eraser from years ago. So I'm wondering if I can buy a uh, refill for this. Maybe get a white eraser that's kind of the same shape and try to stick it in here. I've never tried to replace this, so we'll see. I don't even know how much is left. I can't even tell. But anyway, so that's one of my favorite tools that I always keep out when I use um, for card making. And then I have, of course, my, my color wheels, which are really helpful. Uh, some other things here, uh, just my, oh, these are my big Tim Holtz scissors. I use these a lot for cutting off, um, for instance, if I have, uh, some extra hang, actually, you know what, let me show you this, um, on this, I actually just used it on this tag. I, when I was making my collage, I laid everything down, glued it down, and I had about this overhang. And so when you flip over the card, it's helpful to have some big, long scissors like this. So you can just like, just cut it right off like that and you get it in one big swoop. And so it makes it nice and neat. And then you turn it over and it's all, it's very satisfying to see the, the collage, the way it looks. So I like to keep my big scissors out there. Um, these are my little cutter bee scissors, which I always use for fussy cutting. I love them, they're nonstick. And then I have my, this is my favorite tape runner. This is Tombow uh, Permanent Tape Runner. I like this because it works well on vellum too. You can't really see it through vellum. So I, I always use this and it sticks really well. And then my Fiskars uh, trimmer. This is, I use a guillotine trimmer uh, for delicate items and things that I really need a good cut with or thicker items. This is kind of my everyday card making trimmer that I like to use. It's got a uh, little wire on here where you can line it up and make sure everything is straight when you cut it. But this is, I like the slide uh, mechanism here to trim. I think it works really well. You need to change these every so often. I actually just change this. Once your your paper starts getting kind of shaggy, when you, you do a trim and it gets kind of uh, where you need to sort of file it, then it's time to change your, change your uh, blade on here. So it's really easy to do. Um, it just pops right out and then you just pop it back in again. So I just have uh, some more stamp sets on here. And then also my, oh, this is my favorite liquid glue. I was using this to attach um, these two, this uh, basket die to some uh, backing of some uh, craft colored paper to make the basket. And I this is my new favorite liquid glue. This is Barely Art precision craft glue and this never clogs it's one of those kind of needle nose uh adhesive uh liquid glue um applicators and it comes with a little uh, pin that you can stick in here and it's always ready to go it's never clogs and i love it so this is just what i use from now on and oops, all these things i have a i have a whole um little link that I, I have below with all my favorite items and all these are on there. So you can take a look at that if you want to. Um, and this I always keep too. These, this is my um, chamois that I use to wipe off my stamps as I'm stamping. Um, but the the cloth is that, you can get these everywhere. I get a big pack of these on Amazon and then I cut them apart and they, they last forever. Like I'll get a, you can cut each, I think they come with like a pack of eight or something. And then you can cut them into fours and then you get a little, little one like this and then I use it until it gets all grubby and then I just throw it out and get a new one but I keep it in this little container from Lawn Fawn um, that's got it's just cute I liked it because of the color <laughs> but it's got some vent holes in it too so your um your cloth can stay uh pliable um for a while and it'll dry out eventually but the the holes kind of keep the the cloth from getting uh too dried out right away. So um, I always keep this on my desk when I'm working on my uh, card making. So that's pretty much everything over here. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. I just I just took a trip. I, I like to kind of break up the week by I'll take a trip to either an estate sale or a vintage shop or an antique mall or whatever. And I just took a trip the other day to the antique mall and I said I found didn't find a ton of stuff but I found good quality stuff so let me show you that so my table is all clear I my last video you saw this table was just full of stuff um since I'm I'm done with my with making things for a while um I'm or working on my card desk more now so um I, I cleaned got this all cleaned up uh but this is these are the things I found at the antique mall 
and I never find stationery. And I found two of these. These are really cute little, uh, I'm not sure what year they're from. I can't tell, but they, they appear to be maybe late 70s, early 80s. And these little mice are so adorable. Let me show you a little close up. How cute is that with the little mushrooms? I'm thinking early 80s because mushrooms were really popular, late 70s, early 80s during that time, but the little mouse. So I got two of these. That was a lucky, lucky find. And then I found these. These are really old uh, uh, stamp and seal. So these are the, the foldable cards that you can just pop right in the mail um, when you write a little uh, note on here. And the roses on here are so pretty. It's a kind of a combination of roses and daisies. And it's got a really nice patina on it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the, the video, but just really nice. It looks like I took a, a uh, distress ink pad and kind of went along the edges. <laughs> That's what we're always looking for, but um, this is real. Um, there is some little staining at the top, but that's why I like to use the guillotine trimmer because you can really get close in here and I could just trim off the top and it's still uh, pretty usable. They don't all have them. It's just a couple of them do. So I don't know if they got a little bit of something on them. But um, so I'll, I'll need to trim that off before I put it in a journal. But I thought those are really pretty. And then I found some Halloween treat bags. I thought these were kind of fun 80s style treat bags. And then uh, I always find these decals and I pick them up whenever I can because I find all different kinds. These are, they're basically, they're almost like those uh, temporary tattoos, but you use them for your, your kitchen canisters and your, your uh, cabinets and things like that. You soak them in water and then they can uh, go on the whatever item you want them to go on. But what I like to do is trim them out, fussy cut them and just turn them into stickers. I haven't tried putting them on paper yet because I don't know if it would work like a, like a uh, rub on, you know, that we would normally buy um, online, like for crafting. Um, so I'm not sure I should do an experiment and see, and uh, maybe I'll report back and see how these would work on paper. But I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I think I'm, I, I will do that and then I'll get back to you. But I just thought these images were great. Uh, this kind of Thanksgiving looking uh, images here. And then these butterflies. I just, I like the gold and the, the black combination. That's a really pretty color combination. So I picked up these two things. And then this is sort of an example of how, um, don't overlook anything. I, I've gone... A lot of times I'll go through this, these um, kind of random shelves and they have all kinds of stuff on them. A lot of kitchenware, dishware and things. And um, But they'll have some paper things too that I won't really look at. And this day that I was there, I decided to, I just picked this up and this is actually quite interesting. It's a, I think it's supposed to be a bank book that maybe they handed out once a month. So you kept a different book for every month. This is from 1956 and it's great it's got a uh it's only written a little bit in it but it's for the month of october and it has little quotes on it for every day and then there's like spaces that you could do journaling there's all kinds of things you could do with this or you could pop the whole thing you could take the, the covers a little bit worn you could take the cover off create a new cover and use it for a little like a tiny journal for uh just that particular month or pop it into a larger journal. There's lots you could do with this. So I'm going to keep my eye out for these. Uh, I need to figure out what they're called so that I can look for them more. I'm assuming just like a little bank book or something. Um, yeah, so I don't know. That was kind of a fun little find there. So that was nice to get out and uh, take, take a break and kind of walk around and, and kind of get inspired. That's always fun to do that. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you really quick what I got in my paper tabby uh, kit. Okay, so this is the September kit, and it's the paper tabby, and you can follow her on Instagram, and if you want to sign up for the subscription, just follow Instagram, and she'll give an update of when you can, there's a certain window that you can sign up for kits. And then once you sign up for the kit, you'll receive one every month from then on until you, you can cancel it at any time. 
but um, but you have to kind of watch out for in, on Instagram, and then she'll have a link, I think, on her website where you can sign up. So, and then you get uh, just a cute little uh, array of little vintage style items and well, vintage, true vintage items, and then little uh, die cuts and things like that. Um, once you sign up, and she has a Etsy shop too, where she has a lot of print, really cute printables. Uh, too. So um, I'll put a link to that as well. But this is September and I just thought this is so cute. This is uh, kind of, I don't know, it's got some school thing, just everything that kind of has to do with fall. So um, I'll just go through it really quick, give you a quick view. I haven't seen it this yet. So um, I see a lot of, this would be great for uh, really cute cluster embellishments. So this is a little, little pieces of fabric, um, kind of for quilting I thought that's really cute so these are great to use um, you know to trim the your pages in your junk journals some little buttons and then you get different sizes of packs I'll just I'm not going to go through all this I'll just show you real quick here this is bits and pieces so these are like tiny tiny printables and little vintage uh, ephemera that are kind of mixed in here in the theme of fall and then extra details. These are kind of, this is a little bit of a bigger pack. So more ephemera, but just kind of, uh, kind of bigger pieces of things. So she's got some cute little barn, barn uh, cutouts. And then everything's kind of color coordinated. Little recipe cards and bingo cards. Oh, that's so cute. A little apple cheeked little boy really cute some tags these are great for journaling that's like the tag I had from August where I created um, a, kind of a collage and that's so these nice big tags are nice to work with and then uh, stationery so this is some vintage stationery which I appreciate because I always have a hard time finding vintage stationery although my last trip was was a good one but um, I usually can't find any, so I like that she puts some little stationary items in here. I like this card. I've never seen a card like this before. And then just some memo memo sheets, guest check, and this is so cute. This little stationary piece here. And then pretty papers. So these are the larger, larger pieces of paper ledger papers, business office sheets, that kind of thing. So, oh, this is great. This would be so nice in a scrapbook too. If you just keep a scrapbook with photos and things like that, um, this would be so great to document, do your October daily with. If you like to do an October daily. Oh, this is such a cute napkin. Little gingham napkin. I just, I love how everything is perfectly coordinated. A piece of wallpaper some wrapping, wrapping paper. And then these are some office sheets. Well, I like this one. It's very, very thin railroad sheet. And then this is a nice big sheet of ledger paper. That's, I like the color too. It's kind of an orange. I don't have anything like this. So this is just, that's, that's great. You can get a couple of uh, pages in your junk journal out of this. So that's everything from the paper tabby kit. Uh, so that's everything that's going on right now. I'll put links to all of my new accounts so that you can go ahead and take a look uh, if you're interested. And if you are normally a newsletter subscriber, just be sure to resubscribe to the, the link uh, that I have below to, so that you get updates with the new newsletter. Um, I think this will be a, this is easier for me to make and probably easier for you to read. So, um, so I'm excited about uh, the new newsletter. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, also, let me know if there's any videos that you'd like to see, whether card making or journaling, anything specific that you'd like to see. I'm always open for, for suggestions. So you can definitely leave me a comment about that. And I hope you're having a good weekend and I'll see you in my next video.